Hey guys, how are you? Hope you guys are doing well today. This is Chris from Virillo Training. I just wanted to reach out and make a video right now. I wanted to talk about something I find quite interesting, um, sort of a pattern I've observed that has happened to me and I'm seeing it happen in people around me as well. These sort of topics are ones that are probably not spoken of much on the internet. And when you search up videos about training, this is not gonna be the first video you watch. Um, so I do expect this video to get a lot less views than normal because my channel seems to only like tutorials about interactive brokers trader workstation so let's get to it right here basically what i want to talk to you guys about here today might actually be a little bit more in the psychology realm which is essentially feedback loops so what is a feedback loop well basically it's about how you're perceiving experiences and the kind of vocabulary you're using to describe your experiences and learn from your experiences as well so if you enjoy this type of stuff let's get to it leave a like on the video love you guys cheers so here we go. Whether it's a good experience, a medium experience, or an absolutely horrendous, horrible experience, what you're able to take away from it will ultimately be what affects the future or what you can use to potentially be better positioned in the future. That's sort of the bottom line that I want to get across here. This also ties to the winner effect and gambler's fallacy, which are two interesting topics that you know a trader might find interest in uh, learning a little bit about. Basically, that's the first thing what you take away from a situation. Now, when I'm talking about what you take away, I'm actually forcing you to think, what did you learn from your experience today? Or what did you learn in general? In this video, I do wanna to talk to you about some of the other tendencies that can happen. Beginner traders are prone to this. And also I would say traders that are experiencing long streaks of winners or long streaks of losses. Both those things can be mentally harmful. Let's talk about negative feedback loops and positive feedback loops. Here we go. How you think about your experiences is going to affect your future experiences because you're programming yourself with what you're thinking about. Negative feedback loop is something like this. When you say things like, I'm bad, I'm trash. If this result happens again, I will consider quitting. Tomorrow must be better. You know when you say tomorrow's another day? In reality, in the back of your mind, you're actually saying tomorrow has to be a better day. And if you're unable to admit to yourself that you're saying tomorrow has to be a better day and not simply tomorrow's another day, we'll see what happens, then you're actually setting up a negative feedback loop because deep down you're actually trying to say, I really, really hope tomorrow's gonna be better and if tomorrow's not better, damn, I'm gonna feel bad about it. Let's counteract that with a positive feedback loop. So this is the kind of vocabulary you would wanna use. What happened? And how can I learn something that may improve a habit going forward? That's a proactive approach. You're trying to take something out of the experience, something that can potentially help you be more prepared in the future. Whether the result is bad or good, if you're unable to take something with you from the experience, you're fueling a self-destructive thought process. And essentially you're being careless about it because if you're not sitting there reviewing your progress and saying, what could I have improved on? What did I do well? What did I do not so well? Then you're not taking it seriously. First of all, maybe you're just not admitting it to yourself. Maybe you have a false expectation about something, a false belief that ties into subjectivity. We'll talk about it a bit in a second here. It can actually be a tendency sometimes to program negative feedback loops and somebody who doesn't know better might actually default to a negative feedback loop. So a negative feedback loop is when you're using vocabulary that is largely subjective that actually has no relationship to what actually happened and you're not being proactive about understanding your performance from an objective view basically you're not asking the right questions and also understand the why behind the questions you're asking a simple example would be something like what can i control versus what is completely out of my control oftentimes people underestimate reality they underestimate the randomness of the world around them and this is what feedback loops can do they can lead you to being very irrational and being very subjective you do not want to get into that state ask yourself something like this what can you control and what can't you control next would be something like can you imagine a non-stop streak of negative events can you put yourself in that position likewise can you imagine a non-stop streak of positive events how do you think your mental state is going to be in either of those situations? Understanding that these scenarios are part of everyday life in a probability environment, which is essentially the world. The world is a probability environment. Some people don't seem to think so. If you feel a little bit uncomfortable thinking about those things, it probably means you have not come to terms with reality. Let's be serious. Let's be honest. So this is, again, leading us back to the same point, which is if you can learn one thing from every experience, you're in a position to be better prepared the next time around. 
So I want you to shift your mentality to that. Again, guys, this is not advice, but if you enjoy the content, leave a like. Cheers. <laughs> We're gonna move on here and talk about a couple other things. The first thing is where to put trading in your mind. This one's actually a big one for me. And then I'm gonna tie that in to subjective thoughts and how to bridge the gap between objective reality and subjective thoughts. And that's gonna be it, so let's get right to it here. So where do I put trading in my mind? This has worked for me. I feel like I have somewhat of a balanced mindset about trading. I've mentioned this in another video for sure, but I'm gonna say it again. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think of trading is risk activity. It's nothing other than that. Because of the style of trading that I engage in, I would argue that all trading is risk activity. But that is subjective because you can make the argument that some styles of trading are not. The way I see it, simply put, if you have any other way of thinking about day trading, short-term trading, you may be in a position to harm yourself. Basically, it means that you have some other subjective thoughts about the thing. Okay, subjective thoughts, beliefs, expectations, or even goals, right? Goals can be subjective. How to bridge the gap between objective reality and predetermined thoughts, subjective thoughts. It's simply just about being reality bound, guys. So I'm here right now. What am I doing and why am I doing it? And if you're doing something like trading, you need to be able to ask yourself questions that are relevant to the objective reality in front of you. As soon as you start playing mind games and saying things that are not actually relevant to what's happening, any kind of subjective thought, you could say, oh, the market's against me today. Uh, you could have faded every single one of my trades and made money. I mean, yeah, saying things like that, maybe for a joke, it's funny, right? When it really boils down to it, you need to understand that the market's not out to get you. You just happen to be on the wrong side and that's just how it works. You were the sucker at the poker table and if you were in a losing trade, you need to be able to admit to yourself the truth. If you're making up stories, you're only making it harder for yourself to admit the truth. You wanna try as hard as possible to bridge the gap between your subjective opinions, beliefs, or even comical joke meme things that kind of seep their way into your thought process. And that's a real thing, right? We're in the meme culture now. Your subconscious mind hears all this stuff. You have to be real about the fact that a lot of times the stuff you're reading on the internet, it's funny and entertaining, but is it really helping your mindset and thought process about the whole affair? You have to be honest with yourself about that. And by being honest with yourself, you're essentially trying to stay in the positive feedback loop, okay? And for me, it's this. When I'm reviewing my stuff, what happened? And how can I learn something that may improve a habit going forward? All right, so I'm better prepared in the future. It's the bottom line. I wanna to live to fight another day because I'm curious about the next day. Now, today might not have been so good, but if you're able to take something out of it, then guess what? You're in a great position, my friend. So just to close this off, this is sort of the place that I hold trading in my mind, like I just told you guys, risk activity, okay? I try to think of it as much as possible as risk activity. That way, when I know I've hit my limit on the day, it's over and I just come back the next day and that's the end of the story. You know, I will study my trading on the day and I will try as hard as possible to learn something from what happened because at the end of the day, if I'm able to take something away from what happened, then guess what? I'm in a better position tomorrow. That's how I see it, okay? So the student, you wanna stay a student. If you ever think you're the best at something, guess what? There's gonna be someone who's more humble than you who's about to kick your butt and you just have to be able to accept that and that's it. All right, guys, I'm gonna end the video there for today. I wish you guys all the best. I'll catch you soon. Take care, bye.